bigger than the 950, it doesn't feel that much bigger. That's an automatic win for the XL because it's bringing a bigger battery, better processor, and a half inch more screen size, among others. Some might even say that the look is classier with the XL, but I'll leave that up to you for now. Otherwise, all of the Windows 10 mobile highs and lows seem to be accounted for here, from the futuristic Windows Hello iris scanner and wireless charging, to the fairly Spartan App Store and software bugs that remind you just how young Windows 10 still is. There are little changes here and there. The new side button configuration will take some getting used to, but the most obvious of the 950XL's advantages is its big screen size. Here's where Windows 10 really gets a chance to shine. While you can leave the start screen in its default configuration, which doesn't give you any advantage over the 950, flipping a single toggle in the settings menu opens up that Quad HD panel to all the tiles you can dream of. This won't be for people who already find the live tile look too busy, and it's a long way from the easy glanceability of Windows Phone 7, but if you can figure out a configuration that works for you, there's room here for a lot of information, making the 950XL feel more like a small Windows tablet than a phone. And if you type as much as you take in, the added real estate gives you plenty of room to spread out, especially in landscape. It's a very roomy typing experience. So far, on day one, the 950XL seems very well named. Despite the added specs, it's a very similar in-hand feel to the 950, with the primary standout being that added screen size. As we head into the full review, we're going to keep an eye out for how well the 810 processor performs versus the 808 in the smaller phone, especially in Continuum, how much longer the bigger battery holds out, how much more utility the added screen size brings, and whether all that makes the XL's larger price tag worth it.